I want to start by um, uh, expressing my greatest and sincere thanks to Charles and Rebecca Gilmer for allowing me to come and to share in this event. Amen. And for their leadership over this conference. And um, to all the speakers, uh, I've been listening to Crawford Larissa since I was little. <laughs> I don't want to say that, but yeah, amen. For my parents went to Chicago 81. Yeah, Chicago 81. <laughs> and uh, I went to Impact in 1991 in Atlanta. And uh, I left Impact feeling like I could do anything for God. I was so energized. I felt like I'd do anything for God. And I was telling Curtis Dudley, another one of the 91 alumnus, I said, I don't even know why they're still having this thing. After 91, they didn't need to do it again. It was just so life-changing for us. We always talk about which was the greatest impact. And uh, I'm sure you'll say 2002 was the greatest ever, maybe. I hope you will say that. Uh, hopefully, you'll leave here charge. When I left Impact 1991, I ended up being a youth pastor at three churches at the same time, simultaneously. I was uh, motivated and lunching at the same time. <laughs> but I really felt like I could do anything for God. So I'm excited about being here. And uh, I have something that I think God would have me to share with you that's different than I had planned on sharing, but just based on the feedback from the workshop this morning and people stopping me in the hallway. <laughs> I want my, first before I say this, I want my precious wife to stand up who's endured me for 15 years, 13 in marriage, Vicki, that's my wife. I appreciate her, the mother of our children, and, uh, and I thank God for her. Uh, young lady, I was trying to get back to my room. She stopped me on the escalator and couldn't get in my room. So I'm doing this because I sense that this is an itch that probably needs more scratching. I, 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 and here's why. I found that um, I'll, you're not ready to lead if you don't get this area together. Some people's purposes are being hindered by their private parts. And that's, 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 her, that's deep. Because the nation is waiting on your voice, on your writing, on your gifts and you're squandering them with lust. And so I want to talk about what I'll call tonight. I read a book a few years ago called The Ten Commandments of Dating. I can't remember the, all the contents of the book, but I'm going to give you my five commandments tonight. Five commandments, five thou shalt nots for interpersonal relationships. And hopefully this will help you so that you can... It's hard to teach people on leadership when you're so distracted. You just... <laughs> did you see him? Did you see him? Oh, girl, did you see him? He had cornrows. He had... Mm, mm, girl. <laughs> and guys, instead of worshiping their back, giving each other five and saying, good. <laughs> you distracted. And if any place we need to be focused, it's at impact. You didn't pay $300. You ain't got time to be playing. And believe me, for what you're getting, you got a bargain. Thou shall not be stupid. Let's start there. There's some dumb stuff happening in relationship. I mean, just some stupid. How you? Let me. <laughs> Maya Angelou says, when a person shows you who or what they are, believe them. 
How many times does he have to lie to you before you believe he is a... <laughs> Don't be stupid. Don't disengage your reason from your relationship. Dr. Sam Adams says that there is something that is experienced in the heat of passion in a relationship, and it's called brain relocation phenomenon. Everybody point to their brain right now. Let me see if you know where it is. There you go. There you go. That's not where it is when you're horny. <laughs> Horniness makes you stupid. In the heat of passion, a person experiences brain relocation phenomena, and the brain begins to slide down the neck, down the shoulders, down the chest, and it stops right below the waist. For a woman, in a passionate moment of kissing and intimacy, etc., it takes about 20 minutes for that to happen. For a dude, three seconds. That's it. Three. That's all we need. One, two, three. I ain't th that's why you can't believe a thing he says after the fifth second, because that ain't him talking. I love you, girl. I love your mother. I love your father. I love your dog. I love your cat. I love the roaches in your house. I love you from the first time I saw you. Babe. Oh, girl. I love, I, ooh. Roses are red. Violets. I love you, girl. I just love you, girl. You do? <laughs> Don't be stupid! There are things that the person is trying to show you in a relationship. Stuff slips out, just let them talk. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And if you ask open-ended questions, the person will start becoming revelatory. They'll start revealing who they really are. And if you let a person talk long enough, they'll show you who you are. That's why you got to take your tongue out of each other's mouth and start listening to what each other have to say. Talk to me. Hear me. I need to know what you believe. What do you value? What are your goals? What are your dreams? What are your vision? What's your purpose? Where are you headed? How do you feel about school? Are you in the public school? Are you in the private school? Are you in the home school? Are you in the Christian school? Are you in the school at all? Are you planning on working? Do you have a job? Are you thinking about getting a job? Are you planning on thinking about, planning on thinking about getting a job down the road? Are you going to school? Are you going to military? Are you going to be in the Army, Air Force, Navy? Marie, what's your plan? Get your hands off my butt. Get your hands off my breast and tell me who you are. I need to know. Look at somebody and say, don't be stupid. Listen, the whole purpose of a dating relationship is to discover the core of the person, the character. It's our whole purpose. Who is this? Who are you, Ray Ray? Who are you, Shamini? I have to say this to the sisters because see, th this, is, this is why if you, if you it's, it's, it's small things you have to pay attention to, like 
Where does he park? Um, how does he act, or how does she act? <laughs> yeah, get on them too. Dog, get on them too. <laughs> how does she act when she gets more change back than she should have? She say, oh, the guy got that thing, they got that over on there. You just need to make a little check on that. Mental. First of all, first of all, the way you establish a relationship, this ain't in the script, but this is the way, the way you establish a relationship, the way we establish a relationship is so wrong now. Relationships should initially be developed in community. What you need to, I think a young lady named Lola, I believe it was, that came to me after the session. And it reminded me, we start relationships backwards. Really, community is the place to build relationship. You get involved in a group, a large group, and then maybe that large group becomes a small group that's more focused, that's more uh, regional or something like that. And out of those small groups, you build personal relationships that you can trust. And it's wise for you fellas, let me tell you something that I used to do. I would go out in small groups and I would watch young ladies who I had an interest in. That's how I met my wife. I didn't plan the fellowship because I was really into the fellowship. Once I found my wife, I stopped having fellowships. <laughs> I did. <laughs> I, I was using the fellowship as a vehicle to monitor behavior. I can tell her stuff she said at the fellowship that she doesn't even remember saying because I was scoping her. So you got to learn how to go out in the crowd and watch how a girl says stuff. Watch how she, watch how she, and she's eating like this and, and all slop. You need to watch it. If that's important to you, pay attention to it. If you are seeing a person and they're in another relationship, but they seem to have time to be in relationship with you while this other relationship is going on, oh, sit down before I embarrass you. <laughs> I'm sorry, I ain't got no kind of training. I'm just, I went to Fairmont Heights. Look it up on the internet, Fairmont Heights. That's where I'm from. And then you'll understand. I went to Fairmont Heights High School. Then you'll understand. Now, I said don't be stupid because what happens is there's a character issue here. If he cheated with you, Down the road, he will have no problem cheating. You got it. Don't be stupid. That's number one. Number two, thou shall not appear desperate and pressed. Oh, my God. I wish I had time. Let me emphasize the word appear. Thou shall not appear desperate and or pressed. You can be pressed, just don't let anybody see it. If you're pressed, every now and then you got to run into your dorm room and just grab the bed and say, Jesus, I am pressed. Send somebody, Lord, touch Jesus. <laughs> you you got to... But don't let anybody, when you, you, you can be pressed in private, but always be cool in public. And anybody see you pressed, because when people see you pressed, they'll dog you. They'll take advantage of you. First of all, there's no, if you're in a relationship, it's frustrating to the other person when you keep pressing them. Let me say something, ladies. Don't you ever say again, how, tell a man how many times you had to call him. I called you, I called, I paid you, I hit you on your cell phone, I called you on your mother phone, I called you at work, you ain't called me back, look, make one phone call, that's it, Negro, I called you at home, left you a message, you got call ID, you ain't got it, period. <laughs> don't be, tell somebody, don't be pressed. One, one of the things is, 
You got to stop acting like you're married. He ain't married. In fact, nobody should expect a marital commitment from you if they haven't made a marital commitment to you. I'm going to treat you like, where you been? If your hand looks like this, your left hand, nobody really has a right to know. Don't be desperate. Don't be pressed. You got to get a life outside of that relationships. When you're pressed, you become myopic, and you focus only on one thing. It's, it's like having a vegetable garden, and you only focus on one vegetable. So you got tomatoes in the garden, and broccoli in the garden, and carrots in the garden, and turnips in the garden, and corn in the garden, but all you down with is the tomatoes. This is my tomato. That's your tomatoes represent your relationship. But you got your education right here. You got your career right here. You got your ministry right here. You got your fitness goals right here. You got financial dreams right here. You got domestic relations right here. But all you can say is, Anneli, I love you. Just my boo. <laughs> all you can focus on is your boo. All I need in this life is sin and being my girlfriend, be my girlfriend. And that's all you focus on is the tomatoes. What happens when the tomatoes go bad? Then you sitting around acting like you ain't got nothing to eat. Well, it's broccoli, corn, cabbage, all this other stuff in your life that you've been neglecting. Let the tomatoes work itself out. If it ain't working, the tomatoes will grow again at some other point. See, we do is you find somebody, your nose gets wide open, you can't talk to anybody else, you don't have time for anybody else, you kick your fellas to the curb, hey man, we going bowling tonight? Nah, man, waiting on Shakreek Pree to call me. Uh, we can't. What you gonna do, man? Your whole life becomes zeroed in on one person. No! Too much time together. What y'all talking about? Um, Number three, y'all ready? How y'all doing? Fasten your seatbelts. Thou shalt not freak yourself or anyone else you're not married to. <laughs> That's F-R-E-A-K. <laughs> shall not freak yourself or anyone else you're not married to. Got real quiet in that section, right? Can you get the camera over here? <laughs> Let's talk about this. Freaking yourself, that's masturbation. Gratification. Let me just simplify the whole masturbation thing and Masturbation is uh, something that is not clearly uh, spoken against in Scripture, but there are some references that would seem to indicate that maybe uh, it is sinful. One is the purpose for sin, biblically, is for procreation, recreation, and communication. Procreation is the, the uh, birthing of children. You can't birth children by yourself uh, unless you marry. That was pretty good. You just give me something. Huh? It might be recreational, but you can't communicate unless you're talking to yourself. <laughs> I love me. <laughs> Somebody once said, and I thought this was real interesting, I don't know if it was in Every Man's Battle or some book I read, but it was a guy saying, he said, imagine with the men, if these men who were sitting at a meeting Jesus was having... Imagine if they were struggling with masturbation and Jesus said, if your eye offend you, pluck it out. And if your right 